Hi, my name is Thomas and I am a web developer. In this course I will teach you how to clearly organize validation in Laravel, how particular validation rules works, how to send a message error if validation fails, why validation on backend is better than validation on the frontend. This course is separated into sections and each section presents a subject I mentioned before. I hope you will like this course and it will be the best course about validation in Laravel you ever watched. In the requests folder you see different validation files. Each file is related with one function. For example, this file is used in store function, in which we are saving data to database. This file is related with update function in which we are updating data that was saved to database in store function. Store function is executed when user filled form in which admin can add new user to database. And update function is executed when user filled the form regarding to updating data of user. This file is related with delete many function, in which we are deleting many rows in database by one function. This file is related with register function in which we are saving uh, users data to database here in this uh, rules function we have a list of rules regarding to validation name of this function is required so you can't change it as you see next to first name key we have keyword required which means that user must write something in first name input so, if the body of the request will be no such key as first name, Laravel will return an error. By this sign, we are giving a sign that next to this sign will be another rule. And here we have another rule. This rule means that the value of this key must have at least one sign. So by this rule I am telling Laravel that empty string is not allowed. Here we have the same rule as here but regarding to last name key here you have example of body of the post request so as you see this is a key and the same name of the key must be here
this is another key and the same name of the key must be here and so on these rules are related with these values so Laravel is checking if these values meet these rules here we have a rule regarding to email key it means that this key is required the same rule we have here and here after this sign we have this rule. It means that the value of this email key must have email format, which means something like this. After this sign, we have another rule. This means that we want Laravel to check if in table users in database there is in email column as same email as in the body of the request. Here we are indicating name of the table in which Laravel should looking for this email. This class is related with users table. So this is why Laravel will be looking for this email in users table. By this whole syntax we are checking if this email is unique. It is un unique when we do not have the same email address in users table in database. Larver is using this name as the name of the column in database. So since here is email, Laravel will be looking for column named email in table related with this class. Next we have rule related with key named password. This this rule means that this key is required. So this is the same rule that we have here, here or here. After this sign we have another rule. And in this syntax we are indicating in regexp what password should looks like. This regexp rule means that password should have at least 8 signs, include one letter with uppercase, one number, one special character. Next we have rule regarding to password repeat key. 
you already know what these mean so let's move on this rule means that the value of this key must be the same as value of this key it works because here and here we have the same name let's go to this part of code here we are indicating that there must be in the body of the request such key as professor if in the body of the request there is no such key as administration employee so if this data wouldn't be present here then this data must be present here we have inverted situation by this rule we are indicating that in the body of the request must be such key as administration employee if in the body of the request there is no such key as professor so if this data wouldn't be present here this data must be present this is because I assumed that in my project there is two types of users professor and administration employee user can be professor and administration employee in the same time but can't be neither professor nor administration employee so i am requiring a user to be at least professor or administration employee because of the fact that this key or this key is in this key similar rule must be applied in all keys that are in this key so even if only this key wouldn't be present here then this data must be present or Laravel will return an error so as you see this rule I have here and here because this is a key in this key and this is a key in this key as you have seen in the body of the request the same situation we have here this rule is in this place or this place and in all places that have administration employee at the beginning and of course if this data wouldn't be present here and this data wouldn't be present here Laravel will return an error as well
by this syntax we are indicating that in the body of the request Laravel should looking for key named phone which is in key named professor so by this syntax we are checking if this value meets this requirement. Similar situation we have in all lines in which you see dot. In in this part of code we are saying that there is a key named city in the key named correspondence address and this key is in the key named administration employee this format of data we are getting in request This rule means exactly the same as this rule, but here we have to add this syntax at the end. We are doing so to let Laravel know what is name of the column since we added here some syntax with dot in database in table rated with this class there is no such column named like this So Laravel do not know what is going on. So we need to add this syntax to let Laravel know what is the name of the column we want him to looking for. Here we have name like name of the column in database in table related with this class so this is why we do not need to tell Laravel what is the name of the column like we have to here here we have standard regexp so we are indicating what format of, of phone number should be This rule means exactly the same like this rule or this rule. But here we are requiring one sign, at least one sign, and here at least three signs. Here we are indicating that the value of this key must be an array but as you see here we have a JSON object this is okay because PHP by default converting such object into array so when execution of the code reach this line of code this data will be in the array 
so this rule is actually optional but sometimes you can see an errors without this rule so I have added it for a safety reason this syntax means that postal code must have format like this so that's all about this rules function because the rest of the rules is the same as other rules I have described to you so this is nothing new for you failed validation function is a function which is responsible for return error if any of validation will fail in the parameter we are indicating that this variable must be an object of this class this class is imported to current file here so here we are indicating what type this variable should be Larver is using name of this function so you can't change name of this function this function is working because of the fact that this function has this name and here we are using this class here we have keyword throw after this keyword we are creating new object of this class class that I imported the current file here in the parameter we are executing php built-in json function on the result of built-in php response function in first parameter of json function we are executing laravel built-in all function on the result of laravel built-in errors function which is in the object of this class in the second parameter we are getting a value of this variable which is in this class which we, we imported to current file here this is variable type const this is why we used two columns here and uppercase here so thanks to this function failed validation function if validation fail Laravel will send information about this fact in response for example let's say that password and password repeat is not the same and we had already in database this email in that case Laravel will send in response this information so the email has already been taken and the password repeat and password must match
OK, now let's check file update user request. To be honest, there is almost nothing new for you here. New for you may be only this rule. This rule is similar to rule which you have seen here. Here we have the same syntax as here, but here we have unique keyword and here we have exist keyword. So from the beginning this rule means that this key is required. This rule means that the value of this key must be integer. And by this rule we are saying that in table related with this class Laravel should looking for number in ID column that is the same as ID here in the body of the request. So here we are defining a rule and here we are indicating in which column in database Laravel should looking for. In other words, by this syntax we are checking if such ID exists in table related with this class. We need this rule because we want to update user that has ID like in the body of the request, which means user with this ID. But actually this rule is optional because Here in update function, in this part of code, we are looking for user by his ID. ID that was sent to us in the body of the request, which means in this place. So here we are doing similar operation as here, but checking ID in validation rule is a good practice. It's because Laravel will not execute this part of code if validation here will fail. So this is good for performance. So as you may notice, code in this file is executed in first place, which means body of this function is executing if validation rules over here are OK. In other files in requests folder, there is nothing new for you. So I will skip these files.
because of the fact that I used in this file and all of the files in request folder this Laravel class which I imported to current class here I have an access to body of the request I am using this functional functionality here in store function as you see in this function I am using this class which is of course this class in this variable this class is imported to current file here by this syntax in this variable I saved object of this class this is standard standard syntax of dependency injection and here here and here or here I am getting data from the body of the request by using object of this class that is saved to this variable. The best part is that in any of functions in which we put in the parameter class from request folder we do not have function like validate data or something like that in which we need to put data so Laravel could check this data according to rules we indicated in this function to validate data the only thing we need to do is to add this syntax in the parameter since here we have this class I do not have to do anything more to validate data because each time this store function is executed Laravel automatically will check data in the body of request based on rules we put in this class in in rules function if Laravel find that something is wrong he will return an error in response as you have seen in the example it is highly recommended to do validation in API validation in frontend is important to user to let him know what data we, we required in API but it is not recommended to leave validation only in the frontend because data that are sending to API by frontend can be manipulated by user if he is smart enough to do so validation in API can't be way around by user so it is highly recommended to validate the data in API if we do not want to have surprising results in database 